Are you taking the solicitor's qualifying examination? If so, this video is a practice test question to help you prepare for the SQE1 exam. In this part of the course, we're going to cover what you need to know for the SQE1 exam about central government and accountability, parliamentary privilege and prerogative power. I will explain these uh, concepts in these uh, easy to learn diagrams and then we'll go through this practice test question together for the SQE1 exam for this topic. To get the first part of our full SQE preparation course for free just click on the link below. My goal is to help you prepare for and pass the solicitor's qualifying examination first time. Central government and accountability. Central government means government ministers and their government departments constituting the executive. The work of central government is carried out in the name of the Crown, meaning that central government acts on behalf of the Crown. The accountability of central government is ensured in the main through the separation of powers between central government and the legislature, so the UK Parliament, through which proposed laws bills must be scrutinised and passed before becoming law, and the judiciary through which various government actions can be challenged, for example through judicial review, uh, legislation interpreted, and powers like the royal prerogative demarcated. So let's start with the legislature and parliamentary privilege. The legislature is an essential accountability mechanism for checking the power of central government and uh, government can't enact legislation unless it's been scrutinised and approved by parliament. So there's a range of ancient protections and privileges afforded to MPs but the key one is the freedom of speech meaning that MPs speaking in the commons are not liable for defamation. Without this protection, the government could not be effectively held to account. So it's crucially important for the UK's democracy that elected members of parliament can speak freely and, for example, that opposition MPs can challenge central government in the House of Commons without fear of legal action being brought against them personally for defamation. The other accountability mechanism to check the power of central government is the judiciary. So the source of central government power is firstly legislation, so primary and secondary legislation. This would typically state, for example, the Secretary of State may issue directions requiring X or the Secretary of State may make rules for the regulation of Y. And then, apart from legislation, there's the common law, case law, which delineates the extent of, firstly, the royal prerogative and, secondly, residual common law powers. So the word prerogative means powers exclusive to a particular class. The royal prerogative references powers usually exercised by ministers, so that's the relevant class here, on behalf of the Crown. These powers are a collection of particular powers specific to particular areas of governance. In terms of the judiciary as an accountability mechanism, the prerogative powers are generally justiciable, that is the courts can rule on their existence and scope. So as for prerogative power, it's for the courts and not the Crown to decide whether any royal prerogative power exists and to determine its scope. Since prerogative powers do not originate from any document, their existence and scope are more difficult to determine than statutory powers. Let us consider an example. In 2016, upon a judicial review, the High Court held that the royal prerogative did not empower the government to give notice under Article 50 of the EU Treaty, which began the process by which the UK withdrew from the EU. The Supreme Court upheld 
this ruling, holding that the royal prerogative did not permit this, primarily because the European Communities Act of 1972, through which the UK had joined the EU, had itself been enacted through primary legislation rather than the royal prerogative. So this ruling required the government to bring legislation to give the notice rather than being empowered to take this action through exercise of the royal prerogative. This is a great example of central government being held to account by the judiciary. However, the judiciary's ability to hold government to account has limits. So there are various royal prerogative powers which are not justiciable, so outside the ambit of court supervision, including those to sign treaties, take military action in defence of the realm, and appoint ministers. It's important to remember for the SQE that where there's an overlap or conflict between a prerogative power and a statute, the statute prevails. So if there's a scenario in which there is a statutory scheme in place and the government is attempting to exercise a prerogative power, the statute will prevail. Statute law cannot be altered by use of the prerogative. Let us look now at a more concrete example in a question from the SQE exam for this topic. Following a series of terrorist explosions in central London, the government invoked emergency prerogative powers. These powers enabled the government to take control over commercial buildings that were damaged in the explosions. The powers also enabled the government to deny the occupiers access to those buildings while uh, forensic teams undertook the lengthy process of gathering evidence. Recognising the impact on the occupiers of such buildings, Parliament passed legislation creating a compensation scheme allowing those affected to claim for any costs and losses incurred while those buildings are under the government's control. Notwithstanding this new legislation, the government is continuing to use the prerogative powers in order to avoid paying any co such compensation under the statutory scheme. Which of the following statements best summarises the legal position? A. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, neither prevails. The courts look to the common law for guidance. B. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, the statute prevails. C. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, the prerogative power prevails. D. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, the judge hearing the matter may refer to proceedings in Parliament for guidance. E. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, the judge hearing the matter may refer to a higher court for guidance. The answer is B. Where there is overlap between a prerogative power and a statute, the statute prevails. So by way of explanation, you know the principle that if there is an overlap or a conflict between the royal prerogative power and the statute, then the statute always prevails. So it's not necessary to refer uh, uh, for, to guidance from a court and or to appeal to the uh, common law. So that's the key uh, principle to learn uh, for the purposes of the SQE in this context. I hope you found this helpful. To get the first part of our full SQE preparation course for free, just click on the link below. See you in the course.